Welcome. Today's lesson is on the basics of significant figures. In this podcast, we'll talk about the uncertainty in measurements, the definition of what significant figures are, or what we like to call them sig figs, being able to identify sig figs, and then we'll go over a few examples of some of the ones we discussed. So the first part, uncertainty in measurement. So whenever you have to measure a quantity, there's always some level of uncertainty in there. Um, the uncertainty of a measurement depends on the precision of the measuring device. You'll find that you'll pay a lot more money for devices that are more precise than ones that are not. A digit that must be estimated is called uncertain. A measurement always has some degree of uncertainty. So let's take an example. Here we have a graduated barrette and three different students took three different measurements of the liquid level. So if you take a look here, we know for sure that's 20, 20.1, 20 but when you get to this zone right here, we're not quite clear what's in between. It's not 20.2, it's not 20.1, it's somewhere in the middle. So three different students took three different measurements. Person one wrote 20.15, person two 20.14, and person three 20.16. Well, who's right and who's wrong in their measurements? Actually, they're all correct. The way we can all agree that 20.1 is correct, but it is that uncertainty in between those two lines. We don't know if it's a 0 0.5, 0 0.05, 0 0.04, or 0 0.06. So this comes comes to the definition of what its significant figures are. So in the example, 20.1 is certain, and the hundredth place is uncertain. The definition of significant figures is the certain digits and the first uncertain digit of a measurement is what's considered a significant figure. So all three people, if they were to write this in their lab book, would all be correct. 20.1 are certain, but that last digit is an uncertain digit, and all of it together is considered a significant figure. The next part is identifying sig figs whenever you see um, a list of values. So we're going to talk about non-zero integers, three different types of zeros, which are called leading zeros, captive zeros, and trailing zeros, and then we'll discuss exact numbers. Being able to identify sig figs is really easy, it's just the zeros that can be quite tricky. So the first part we're going to talk about is non-zero integers. Non-zero integers always count as significant figures. So we have four digits here, there's going to be four sig figs in this value. Don't have to worry about any zeros. Here we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven digits. So that's going to be seven sig figs for this number. And here we got no zeros to worry about. Everything here is significant. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten digits. So we have to identify how many significant figures. For anything that has nothing to do with zeros, you just count them all up. It gets a little bit trickier when you start talking about zeros. So, and there, if the first part is leading zeros. Basically, a leading zero is the zeros that are in front of a number. And usually that has to do with numbers that are very, very, very small. So, for example, we have 0 0.0486. The first two are called leading zeros. They're only there for placeholders. We do not count them as significant figures. So when we ask how many significant figures this number has, it's only going to be three. Same goes with the second example. First three digits are leading zeros. We never include the leading zeros. We just count the numbers after that. So in this case, it's going to have three sig figs for this. Third example, same case. All of these are leading zeros. We cross them all out. We got that one digit. That's going to be one significant figure. So pretty easy so far. The next zero are called captive zeros. So a captive zero is basically a zero that's in the middle, and we always count them as significant figures. So here's a zero in between two non-zero integers. We will count all of these digits. So that has four sig figs. Here, zero is again in the middle. We will count all of them. One, two, three, four, five. So that's got five sig figs. OK, now this last one, we're mixing two different themes now. So the 0, 0.00, they're called leading zeros. We never include those, but we do add these zeros in the middle. So this would have four significant figures. OK, 
Okay, the last one is where it gets a little bit tricky. And they're called trailing zeros. So trailing zeros are significant only if the number contains a decimal point. So in this number we see a decimal point, 9.300. We will count all of these. So this is going to have four sig figs. Here we have 100.0. We have a decimal point that has four sig figs. Here we simply just have a thousand and there is no decimal point. So if there's no decimal point, we do not include those zeros in the number. The number of significant figures is just one. In the last example, we're mixing three different themes here. So the first part is we have leading zeros. We never include those. We do include include these two zeros down here. Um, and since we do have a decimal point, we will include all the zeros after the nine. So in this example, we have one, two, three, six sig figs for this example. The last one is exact numbers. Exact numbers have an infinite number of significant figures. They are not measured values. So whatever number you see, if it's an exact number, we do not consider even taking into account significant figures. We that have an infinite number. So one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. Gravity equals 9.81 meters per second square. One meter always equals 1,000 millimeters. Uh, this makes more, more sense when we start doing math operations, so don't worry too much about exact numbers just yet. Okay, last part of our lesson, we're going to go over just a few examples. So 20.15, I'm sorry, 20.5 would have three sig figs. And the reason why it would have three sig figs is captive zeros. Here we got 1.23. There are no zeros to take into account. On this one, I'm going to count them all. These would be called non-zero integers. Here we have leading zeros, so we're only going to include those three. So this would have three sig figs. And the reason for this is leading zeros. Here we have 290, but there's no decimal point. So we're only going to include the 2 and the 9, not the 0. That's going to have two sig figs. And the note for this is the definition for trailing zeros. No decimal point, we don't include them. But the next example does. It does have a decimal point. We will include all of these. This will have four sig figs. And the reason for this is trailing zeros. The last one is we're mixing a lot of themes. We don't include the leading zeros. We have a captive zero, which we will include. We do have a decimal point, so we will include the last zero at the end. This will have four sig figs, and this has got basically all the different type of zeros.